Hey YouTube family, how are you guys doing? I hope this video is finding you all doing well. You know what? It's time to mod something. <laughs> Let me show you what I got going on. Okay, so here is a Pro Junior 4 guitar amp. If you watch my past videos, I demoed one of these when they first came out. So what I really like about these is they're simple, they have two knobs, um, and they have a Jensen P10R speaker, which I bought after reviewing this amp because I was so impressed with the sound of that speaker. That speaker that I purchased is actually in this cab. The actual enclosure I purchased from Implicit Audio, and I was able to build the enclosure myself. And on the back of the enclosure is the Jensen P10R speaker. So in that video, I said I would never buy one of these because here in Canada, these things are almost a thousand dollars to buy. They are like 800 and X amount of dollars plus taxes here at 15%. It puts them just under the thousand mark range. And for a two knob amplifier, um, I'm sorry, but I'm not, I'm not paying for that. <laughs> So recently, I found this little guy in perfect shape for 500 bucks. So like I said in my video, if I ever find one for 500 bucks, I would grab it right away. So I did. But here's the issue. This little thing only has one output, like from the amplifier to the speaker. And I want to run a second cab. I think this thing would sound awesome running two of these uh, P10R speakers. Now the issue with these, uh, according to Fender and according to some uh, talk online on some forums, is the OT, so the output transformer that Fender uses on these, of course they're a lower quality transformer, you know, to cut back on costs, although they're like a thousand dollar amplifier. Anyway, you know how it works. So Fender uses some fairly low-end components to make these amps. Um, so these output transformers will not handle, a f like they're, they're an eight ohm speaker, but they won't handle four ohms, or they're saying that it could potentially damage the amp long-term. But six, 16 ohms is okay. So what we're gonna do today is, I wanna do two things. I wanna be able to mic that thing, like with an XLR line out kind of like I do with my Quilter Superblocks. So they just have a direct line out, uh, speaker emulated, and I want to be able to line it out. So that's one thing. And the other thing is I want to have two outputs on the back of this thing um, without drilling into the chassis and doing a big mess back there so that I can connect two cabs running at, at 16 ohms. So that means I need to have the output somehow connected in series because parallel subtracts. So if I have two 8 ohm speakers in parallel, it would give me 4 ohms, and two 8 ohm speakers in series would give me 16 ohms. Um, I'm not an amp tech, but I'm pretty sure my that math is fairly simple enough to understand. So here's what we're going to do we're going to use this red box DI, right? So your amp signal. Uh, comes in here, uh, the through signal comes out there, and then uh, is where your speaker would plug into. But I'm going to go one step further, so I'm going to go. Pu I'm going to put this in here. We're going to make an additional. We're going to convert this little uh, pedal board um, connection cable into a speaker cable with these two right angle jacks. So I'm going to pop these jacks off and make a speaker wire out of it. Um, and using this uh, connection box, we're going to cut this end off, we're going to cut this end off, uh, just put some duct tape on that to keep the dust from getting in there. And using a couple of speaker wire ends and using some guitar input jacks that I have lying around here, we are going to make uh, a cab merger uh, series box where I can send the signal from the amp going into the red box out of the red box going into this um, and having two extra jacks wired in series that one can go to cab one which would be the original speaker in the uh, pro junior and the other one will go to cab two which would be my home built um, extension cabinet with the 110 jensen p10r so that's the plan 
Uh, might sound a little weird or complicated, but stick around because I think I can make this work, but uh, we'll find out. So first thing to do, I think the easiest thing is just to convert this cable and by the magic of YouTube and video, watch this. Abra Kadabra. There you go. <laughs> it's magic. So I just uh, took a piece of speaker wire and, uh, you know, stripped these jacks off, got the original wire out and uh, now you have it. You have a speaker wire, nice short one that I'll need to connect from here to here once it's done and uh, I just taped it up at the bottom because this speaker wire is a lot smaller in diameter than you know the original wire that was going through here so there was a lot of extra space so I just put some tape there so this worked out great all right next thing we're gonna mod this box first thing we're gonna do is drill three holes for the jacks in this cover so I just took this old jack plate from a parts bin that I had just to measure the hole. But all right, so it looks like right there is the depth I need. So I just took some blue marker and uh, colored where I need to stop drilling. And uh, that should be pretty straightforward. So let's get this done. Wow, those stepper bits do a great job. So they, they take this material out really cleanly and uh, leaves you with some nice holes. So perfect, I got my three jack holes. Now I gotta get rid of this bottom piece because I'm not gonna need it, and the side piece because it's just taking up space for nothing. Okay, there you go. That bottom piece is gone. Just gotta go in and sand that smooth. And that side piece is gone. So I'm gonna sand that smooth, and we're just gonna tape that up. I'm just gonna put some duct tape over that, some gray duct tape, just so uh, dust doesn't get in. Let's go do that and then start to assemble those jacks. All right, so good old duct tape. I just uh, put a piece in the bottom and a piece at, on the underside of the box. I did the same with the end. So just a little piece of duct tape over there and a little piece of duct tape on the inside. So no more dust you know, can, can get in once this cap is on. Now I just installed these input jacks so that's gonna look like that on the outside. And we're getting ready to solder. So I'm gonna set up this phone and I'll go through the process with you. All right, so I'm gonna to try to explain this. Um, so the tip of the jack, that is your positive. Okay, so that's connected to this tab on the side here on all three. And your negative is the sleeve of the jack and that's connected to the uh, left most tip right here. So the way this works, this is gonna be like just a regular input jack. So you have one lead going to negative, one lead going to positive, all right? And then these are going to be my series jacks, so which my speakers will connect to. So this one's gonna come from the amp, right? So the output from the amp will go in here and then I'll have two series jacks. So I'm going to have positive to positive, and then negative to positive, and then negative from the last one to negative of the first one. So that'll put these in series, and this one will just be a regular positive negative input jack. So that is the plan. So I used real speaker wire, just because I'm going from an amp to speakers, I didn't know if just regular you know wire that you'd find in a guitar cavity would be um, okay, so I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna use speaker wire and be done with it. So, in the meantime, I went upstairs and I took my little label maker and the front's gonna look like this. So I have, you know, I have my amp input and I have my cab one and then my cab two. So time to reassemble and test it. All right, well, here we go. <laughs> there is the series cab merger box. Not bad. Hope it works as good as it looks because <laughs> it looks pretty good. All right, let's do this. Okay, so you, it's gonna be hard to show you this, but so this is a speaker wire that I already had uh, for a cab that I used to use years ago. So this is still good. It's a little longer than the one I just made. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is plug this one in the amp. Take this cable out. So unplug the Pro Junior speaker wire. Okay, got that. So the Pro Junior speaker wire is right here. So I'll plug this in the amp. I'm just going to have to trust me here that I'm doing what I'm saying. <laughs> plug this up here. Alright, that's clicked in. And now this is going to go in the amp of the box I just built. The Fender Pro Junior speaker wire will go in cab number one. Uh, I don't have enough wire to show you, so all right, and uh, I need a right angle. And then cab number two will be plugged in there. I'm just going to leave the box inside the Pro Junior, like so. I don't know if you can see that. Just going to leave it there for now. Eventually, I'll Velcro it in place. This wire I'm only going to use when I connect the red box DI. So I'm going to set this one on top here. I'll reposition the camera. I'm going to plug in the. I'll bring you around. All right, I'm going to plug in. So you can see the box here. This is the line from cab two. Plug that in there. So these are two Jensen P10R speakers. I'm going to plug the amp in the wall. Ah, plug this cable in the top of the amp. Power the amp on. The volume off. And I'll bring it back around here. All right. Grab the old modded Amun Strat and see if this works. Dual cabs. Oh, we got power. So now to show you how I'm going to rig this up so I can use my Redbox DI to line out my amp to the board so I don't have to mic it. Um, Alright, so once again I'm going to take this longer wire, uh, run it up to where the speaker of the Pro Junior comes out of the amp. Oh, it's hard to... It's got to go by feel because there's not a lot of room to work with. There you go, that's plugged in there. That, so that's coming out of the amp, that's going to go in the red box. That new speaker wire that I built is going to go through. That's going to go in here. This is going to go... Oh, oh it's very tricky. This is going to go in the amp of the box that I built. Like so. That'll all be Velcroed in. And then the speaker of the Pro Junior will go into, I can reach that plug back here. Pro Junior speaker will go into cab one. Like so. Click. 
and that's it, we're done. And then cab two will just plug in there into the extension cabinet. So I still have room to reach in here and plug the XLR uh, female end input here and get the male end to the board. And so once again, the output from the amp is going into the input from the Redbox DI. The through jack or the output of the Redbox DI is going into the amp in of the box I just built. And then the speaker from the Pro Junior is going into cab one. And then cab two will just be a typical speaker patch cable from cab two to the second cab. And thanks for following along. Let me know what you think. And use so you guys take care, God bless. And until next time, rock and roll.